Hello, this video is going to be on bubble URL control. So this means using the go to page workflow, but staying on the same page, but still changing the URL. What I mean with this, what you might know is if you click an element, you can use it to, of course, go to another page using the go to page workflow. But actually, you can also use it on the same page. For example, we click a category here like Italian. And we see actually we change our URL here to Italian or snack to only see recipes which include snacks or meat dishes. And in a similar way, if we actually click meat and cheese sandwich, we can actually see more of it and also notice that actually our URL is changing and we can even share this link. And when we go to this page again, then actually Bubble will recognize this URL and immediately show it in a pop up. I'll show you how to do this. If you haven't already, though, uh, please uh, subscribe uh, to this channel and do check out the site uh, tiplister.com where I have lots of uh, short bubble tips, which of course you can also share your own and uh, join the newsletter for weekly bubble tips. So let's go through the workflows just quickly. The database setup was in the previous videos already. We have recipes and recipes have ingredients. So therefore underneath the data type, we have here R for recipe, recipes have a description, an image you saw, also a list of categories. So one recipe can belong to multiple categories such as the Italian category, the snack category, or the takes long category we saw. And then each recipe has a list of ingredients so users can know how to make it. And then if you go into ingredients, each ingredient just has text and a category also is just text. Okay, so what's special about this page is that it's type of content category, which means it expects a category. However, when we load this page, it will still work even with no category selected because normally if we click here on pizza to go to the pizza page, which is type recipe, as you see here, recipe. It will only work if it's got actually a recipe URL here, because if we actually just type recipe, we won't see anything because Bubble doesn't know what recipe to show it. So that's kind of our first challenge to solve uh, this problem. And to do that, underneath the condition of the main repeating group on the page, I added when the current page category is empty, just search for all recipes. So I have to tell it what to do in case there is no current page category. Okay, then the next thing we wanted to do is when we click a category, we change the URL to, for example, Italian. And also we only see recipes which have this category in their list of categories. So to do this, we've got here underneath the standard type of content recipe, search for recipes where the list of category contains the current page category. Okay, and then when we click, so here we have a search for categories showing our different character, uh, categories. And when we click a category text or a button, we use go to page. This is the same page we're on. So we can not only go to a different page but actually even use the same page and bubble will understand this and then we can send the current sales category so when we click snack we send a snack to the page and then the repeating group shows of course only recipes with the snack in their list of categories that's the first part the next part is this pop-up to show the meat and cheese sandwich if we click so again we add a workflow to the text and this time, again, we tell it to go to a page, but the same page, sending the category, but we're not actually going to use the category, which is just, we're just keeping the same category we already had, the current page category. What we're actually using is send more parameters to the page. So we checked this box and selected recipe equals current sales or recipes unique ID. So underneath data, app data and recipes, we see all of our recipes and we will see each one of them has a unique ID which Bubble gives to it. And this lets Bubble identify which recipe to show. So when we click 
here we send the unique ID to the URL, as you saw here, it's up here now. And this helps Bubble recognize what to do. We, however, have to create the pop-up first. So we have got a pop-up here, pop-up recipe. We told it to expect a recipe. And we have the data source normally empty, but actually we check the URL for the data source. So to do this, we added a condition and we used get data from page URL. And then we said get recipe because remember we told it in the workflow to send key recipe. We could have also called it R equals, but we called it recipe. This was our choice. So we did get recipe is not empty. So whenever the text is not empty, we tell Bubble again to get the data from the page URL. But this time, instead of selecting text, we select recipe because then it knows that it's supposed to look in all unique IDs of all recipes to then find this unique ID to then display exactly the meat and cheese sandwich recipe. So here it can just be text because we're just checking if it's not empty or but here we actually want to find the right recipe. So therefore we have to tell it that it's type recipe and then it will know that the unique ID has to be a recipe. And then here we just have something uh, showing the parent group's recipes, name, image, description, and uh, parent group's recipes list of ingredients. Okay, and then one more thing has to happen when we close the pop-up, we have to actually get rid of the URL. So here you will see it went away because that allows us to click it again and change for something else. So we have to reset the URL. To do this, we can go to workflows and then go over to the empty box here and select when a pop-up is closed. And then we select when pop-up recipe is closed. We again tell it to go to the same page, but here there's no more parameters. We want to empty the parameters and just send the category that it's already there. So that basically overrides the URL from what it's here with the recipe equals to just data types Italian. Okay, so those were the kind of two methods you can use to manipulate the URL, but stay on the same page and use that to control what you see in a repeating group or what you see in a pop-up on the same page which of course allows you also to create shareable links where if you input this link, Bubble will understand that the URL is not empty and open the pop-up. Actually opening the pop-up, we also still need a condition for that. So we used do when condition is true. So when the get recipe is not empty, so when this URL parameter is not empty, then we show the pop-up. Because if we did not do that, the pop-up would not open. It would display the right data, but that doesn't matter if it's not open right. So we basically, when we click the button, we change the URL. And then also whenever the URL is changed, we open the pop-up immediately. Okay, so hope this video helped you. And if you want a video request, feel free to share this with me and I'll see what I can do. Have a good day. Cheers.